This video has instructions for making an overhead water rocket launcher that shoots recycled plastic bottles. Everybody likes to get sprayed by the water rocket. This overhead design allows kids to gather safely underneath without danger of being hit by the rocket on the way up. You might have seen this water rocket launcher featured on the PBS TV program, Ask This Old House. In February 2009, they had a special kids program using construction materials to make kids stuff. Here's a short overview of the components and construction so you can see what's involved before jumping in. The materials are inexpensive, available at a building center or hardware store with a good plumbing department. One part comes from an auto parts store or garage. Building the launcher uses common tools. The hardest to find tool might be the electric drill you'll need. The water rocket depends on the happy coincidence that a two liter carbonated soft drink bottle slides perfectly over common, cheap plastic pipe. Using a candle, you can soften the plastic pipe. Then by pushing inward, you can make a slight bulge in the softened pipe, which becomes permanent as the plastic cools. As you wedge it against the bump, the spout of the bottle seals on the pinch, even when there's lots of pressure in the bottle. I think this kind of seal is easier to make and more durable than using O-rings, which is another way water rockets are sealed to hold pressure. We can thank Australian water rocket experimenter Ian Clark for coming up with a simple and effective way to hold the bottle onto the bulge while it's being pressurized. He used ordinary wire bundling ties, sometimes called zip ties. The bottle has a little handle that we hold onto when carrying the bottle. The protruding side of the head of the zip ties can hook onto that handle. We actually use eight ties taped together. A hose clamp attaches the plastic ties to the pipe and allows for adjustments. Of course, something has to keep the head of the ties holding on to the bottle until you're ready to launch. By another happy coincidence, another common, larger size of plastic pipe fits right over the plastic ties, making them grab the bottle handle. Just by sliding the pipe a little, you can hold the bottle on or let it go. Here you can see someone pulling a string that pulls the big piece of pipe down. Starting up here and ending up down here, releasing the pressurized bottle. For a long time, that was the extent of the trigger mechanism, but there was a problem. Sometimes the big pipe was a little too loose. It's not pressurized here, but even when it was, the bigger pipe could unexpectedly slide down like this, releasing the rocket before you were ready. At first, I dealt with the problem by patting the inside of the big pipe with tape so it would have a tighter fit, but it still relied on friction to keep it up. We can thank James Hardy, a British astronomer who also experiments with sending tiny video cameras up in water rockets for a more reliable way to hold the trigger pipe up. Say you cut the bottom and the top off a two liter bottle. The open-ended cylinder would be springy. If you cut two small holes on opposite walls of the cylinder, You could mount this springy thing on the thin pipe, and it would have enough springiness to push the fat piece of pipe up against gravity. So no matter how loose the trigger pipe, the rocket would not launch unless someone pulled the string. Although the rocket will work without the springy cylinder, 
I think the added safety is well worth the little bit of extra work. The rest of the launcher is mostly plastic pipe and glued on fittings. Don't be intimidated about gluing plastic pipe just because you haven't done it before. Mind you, it's messy and there are fumes, so do it outside, but it's easy to learn how to do. Starting on the bottom, a glued on end cap holds in air pressure. A little farther up is where you attach the bicycle pump to pump pressurized air into the pipe, which in turn pressurizes the bottle at the top. You'll have to drill a hole in this end cap for the valve. Then you just pull it really hard through the hole and it seals without any glue. About halfway up the launcher, there are two small fittings that allow you to unscrew and take the launcher apart into two shorter pieces. You don't have to use them, but they're very convenient for transport and storage of the tall launcher. Farther up is leftover pipe, which is taped to the other pipe to stiffen it. It also holds the springy thing up, and you already know about the trigger mechanism. The water rocket is fun, educational, and safe if you follow a few common sense rules, like never pointing it at someone. I see it as analogous to driving. I drive my children places several times a week. I know that a moment of careless driving could get somebody injured or killed. So I drive carefully. Half inch, Schedule 40, PVC, not CPVC, pipe, comes in 10 foot sections. You need one section. You can ask them to cut 4 feet off if it makes it easier to transport. You also need a 1.5 inch piece of pipe, but you only need 2 inches of that. See if you can wrangle 2 inches from somebody. You need a half inch slip T, just one. Slip means you can glue it onto the pipe. You need two half inch end caps. You need one each threaded adapter, one with internal threads and one with external threads. And for those threads, a small roll of Teflon thread tape. For gluing, a small can of PVC pipe cement. One hose clamp that opens to at least an inch diameter. Eight 8 inch plastic ties. You'll probably find them in the electrical section of the store. From any auto parts store you'll find a stem, then around the house you're likely to already have sandpaper, drill and drill bits, pliers, tape measure, candle, duct tape, twine, several soda bottles, and an air pump. Here's the pipe cut list. It adds up to 10 feet. A hacksaw works well for cutting. Before we can glue the pipe together, we have to take care of the valve that gets the compressed air into the launcher. So drill a half inch hole in the end of an end cap. Regardless of whether you use a drill press or a hand drill, hold on to the end cap with a pair of pliers. Back up your drilling with a piece of scrap wood and hold on tight. Clean out the chips with a fingernail to ensure a good seal. Make sure the valve cap is on so when you grab it with the pliers it won't mar the threads. The plastic needs to seat in this groove so you need to pull it through really hard and maybe twist and turn it a bit to get it through. With the valve in, now you can glue. So it'll go like this. Another end cap to the 18 inch piece of pipe, the other end of the 18 inch piece to a T, the two inch piece into the middle of the T, and the cap and valve onto the other end of the two inch piece. The T to the 30 inch piece takes us up to the threaded adapters. 
These allow us to unscrew the launcher for easy transport and storage. Then it's on to the 48 or 4 foot piece and there's nothing on the other end. I sand the surfaces, both inside and outside, that will glue together. And it seems to work, but be warned that you're supposed to use a primer before you use the glue. It seems I always have to use big pliers to get the pipe cement open, but then I close it really tight too so it doesn't dry out. Put the pipe cement both inside and outside, and quickly push them together. Solvent cement is really nasty stuff, and you should be doing this outside. I couldn't with darkness and rain, but I had a great cross breeze. The adapters get glued on too, but don't get glue on the threads. When you're done, it'll look something like this. Now's a good time to put the Teflon thread tape on. Five or six wraps keeps the connection from leaking, and if you can wrap it in the direction I'm showing, you can avoid having it peel off as you twist it in. It's time to go to the top where the bottle will be and create a bump to seal the air and water in the bottle, even under pressure. Push the pipe in so it almost hits the end of the bottle, but not quite touching. Mark a ring all the way around the pipe. If you want a measurement, it's about 11 inches from the end of the pipe. We're not going to burn the plastic pipe, but we are going to soften it up with a candle. You don't have to do this, but if you have a few dowels that will fit snugly into the pipe, it'll keep the pipe perfectly straight as you soften it. Keep the pipe at least an inch and a half away from the flame, and keep it moving, rotating. After a minute or two, if you don't have the sticks in the pipe, you'll be able to bend it. But what we really want to do is push both ends inward hard. And when you do that, it makes a bump all the way around the pipe from here to here. This time when you push the bottle on, it should get stuck on the bump. And that's where it seals. A bunch of plastic ties will hold the bottle on by the handle. You need eight plastic ties. Mark them five inches from the end and cut them at five inches. Lay them next to each other like this. Make sure the heads are on top. Tape a ruler or a straight edge down to even the heads of the ties. Then push all the heads together. The bottom of the ties should be parallel. They should not converge. Cut off a piece of duct tape a little bit longer than the bunch of ties is wide. Line it up with the ends and really press hard to make it stick. Carefully flip over the assembly and sandwich the ties with another piece of duct tape. Trim the tape, but leave a little bit sticking out. The tie assembly will go on like this, but they won't hold the bottle on unless something keeps them from spreading out. That something is the bigger inch and a half diameter PVC pipe. You only need a two inch piece. If you cut it with the miter saw, the edge is nice and square, but hacksaws are notorious for cutting crooked. But if you wrap the pipe with a piece of paper and draw a circle all the way around, you can cut a little, rotate the pipe, cut a little more, rotate the pipe, and eventually make a nice straight cut. This is the trigger, and a very crooked cut could affect the function so it's more than just looks. For the pull string, I used a piece of old baling twine 
because I like to recycle things. Whatever you use, choose a drill bit about the same diameter. Drill a hole near the end, but not so near the end that it might break out. Thread it from the inside to the outside. Then tie a knot on the outside. I tie a double overhand knot, but I think most any knot will do. Assembling the trigger mechanism can be a little awkward and confusing at first, so we'll take it one step at a time. Pull the big pipe over the ties, and notice that with the pipe in one position, the ties grab onto the bottle, but move the pipe a little and it lets the bottle go. It's time to attach the ties to the small pipe with a hose clamp. Get the tie ends and duct tape under the loose clamp. Get the wider pipe over the ties on the other end. Put the bottle to the bump firmly. You don't want it really tight, but you don't want it loose either. Get the tie heads over the handle of the bottle and lock on the bottle by sliding the pipe up. As I tighten the hose clamp, I'm pulling the ties this way to eliminate leaks. Tighten the pipe clamp pretty tight. I've never needed a second pipe clamp, but if you need the extra strength, there's plenty of room on the duct tape. We face just one more challenge before launching. The trigger won't stay up. At one time, we would just put a couple of strips of duct tape on the inside of the pipe so there was enough friction to keep it up. But now we have a better way. We'll make a spring from the part of the two liter bottle where the label is. It's easiest to start the cut with a razor blade and switch over to scissors once you've gotten through. Save the bottom. You can use it to launch water balloons. With the ends off, take off the label. Gently flatten the cylinder and put the pipe in the middle. Trace a circle on the inside of the pipe. Flip over and trace another circle exactly lined up with the first circle just on the other side. Cut out the circles and do not cut outside the line. Holding the ties tight temporarily with a rubber band or a piece of tape may help you with the next step. Put the spring on. The hose clamp will stop it from going further down the pipe. Then put the trigger pipe on, as shown, and thread the twine through the two holes of the spring. Get everything past the tie heads. Get the rubber band off and lock a bottle on. Tape the twine on near the bottom of that four foot pipe. With the bottle locked on, tape the twine just tight enough that it's not sagging. It is possible for the spring to slip past the hose clamp. So line up that leftover 22 inch piece of pipe with the hose clamp and tape it to the other pipe in at least three places. By the way, this will also add some stiffness to the other pipe. To use the overhead water rocket, connect the bicycle pump, fill a two liter bottle a third to a half full, get the bottle on the pipe, and make sure it's locked on. Don't go over 70 pounds per square inch. When you fill it with compressed air, you're storing a lot of potential energy. If it were pointed at and hit somebody, it could kill them. It requires responsible adult supervision. Count down and pull the string. If you save the bottom of a bottle, you can tape it to the launching bottle Tape up the sharp edges. And launch a water balloon. Wow. 
Sometimes you get water vapor inside the bottle. Tip out the water after each launch. If the check valve on your pump is faulty, yeah. you might have to empty it out too. Play safe and share the fun.